this video, I'm going to discuss objects, instances, and templates. Now I know that some of you are a little bit confused about the difference between objects, instances, and templates, and so we're going to take a few minutes just to briefly discuss it. And I want to say that there's a more detailed discussion that's found in the application server guide on the Wonderware website. Chapter 2 is where it begins, and it's very detailed and very comprehensive. But I'm just going to touch on a few of those things and try to clear up some misconceptions in this short video. So first, let's take a look at the Orchestra object model. And this is where you can see how the objects are divided and segregated within the galaxy. And we're going to touch primarily on application objects, device integration objects, and system objects. Now, when you first create a Wonderware, an Orchestra galaxy, it'll put together some base templates for you. And so here's your application objects, your device integration object, and your system object folders in the template toolbox. Now under application, it gives you some base objects. It gives you an analog device object, which is really good for connecting to transmitters, Boolean object to talk to switches, device, discrete device, SQL data, there's, these are specific types, and you can experiment with these to see which ones you like, but these are base templates that cannot be modified. You have to use them as is. Now, I want you to notice something about all of these templates. There's a dollar sign in front of the name. When you see a dollar sign in front of the name in Orchestra, that's a template. These are the blueprints for or cookie cutters for the different type of objects. So when you create an analog device template, when you create an object from that, it'll be an analog device object and it'll take on all the characteristics of that parent template. Now the bottom template is the user defined template and that's actually what you'll find very commonly used because so many times what's provided isn't really flexible enough and so it needs to be modified and changed and this is the easier way just take a user defined it's bait it's a blank template and you can build from it whatever you want. Device integration templates there's DDE Suite Link, InTouch Proxy, OPC Client, Redundant DI. Those are, and those two bottom ones are actually device integration that are specific to DAS server that have been deployed inside the Galaxy. The DDE Suite Link client, now DDE is a technology that, or a protocol that's been around for a long time and it's really not supported anymore by Microsoft, but it was dynamic data exchange. They also built into that client the Sweet Link client. And the Sweet Link is actually Wonderware's native communication protocol. So we use the Sweet Link client to communicate with uh, DAS servers that Wonderware are, has provided. You, because Wonderware has a whole suite of data acquisition servers for communicating with Alan Bradley and Modbus and other devices. And you would use this Sweet Link client to connect to those installed DAS servers. InTouch Proxy allows you to communicate with uh, InTouch applications inside of the Galaxy. If you have a server, like for instance, if you're using Alan Bradley and you have RS Links, RS Links is an OPC server. So you can take a generic OPC client and communicate with that OPC server. So you can actually use OPC client to communicate with RS Links. Redundant DI, that's for use in redundant applications where you need to have say two platforms that are running separate clients that need to have a failover place and that's what that's used for. The system templates, you have the Win platform template, everything has to be in, Gal in Galaxy has to be hosted on a platform. The very first platform you create is going to be your Galaxy repository platform and from there other target computers will have to have platforms in order to run engines and areas. The app engine template is where engine objects are created. Area objects run on the engine. Now areas, area objects determine alarm flow hierarchy. So you would actually have to put an area on an engine and an engine on a platform. Now application objects actually have to be placed on an area. So you have to have an area object in order to place your and deploy your application objects. Now the view engine template creates a very special object. Its only purpose is to run the InTouch view app. So InTouch view app template creates InTouch view applications. 
So if you had an InTouch application, a Wonderware application that was standalone outside of the Galaxy. So now, so look at Legacy, Legacy Wonderware. You have a Wonderware application, and the way you edit that thing is with Windowmaker. It stands by itself, but it doesn't have any orchestra graphics. It only has smart symbols or collections that have been created into groups. If you want to be able to use orchestra graphics, then you have to take that view that view application that you have and import it into the Galaxy. And when you import it into the Galaxy, it's going to become an InTouch view app object, and it's it's going to actually be imported in under, as underneath this template as one of those objects. And then that object will be hosted on the View Engine. Let's talk in detail about the application application templates. So these actually represent real world devices, analog devices, transmitters, encoders, etc., discrete devices, switches, and other Boolean devices. A user defined object, maybe template, may be customized as required for any type of device. Now I'm going to use an example here of a motorized valve. A motorized valve, we could use a user-defined template to create a motorized valve template. And the motorized valve template would have contained under it three other types of templates. A discrete input template, a discrete output template, and an analog input template. So if you look on the right, that this is the model of the objects. So we're going to create an object, MV100, from our motorized valve template. Then we're going to create an open and closed object from our discrete input template. And then we're going to create an open command and closed command object from our discrete output template. And finally, a position object from our analog input template. So the open and closed objects will communicate with a PLC to receive data from an open limit switch or a closed limit switch. The open command, close command are actually going to be sending data to the PLC to, op to open the, com the valve or close the valve. The position is an analog value that we're going to read that tells us where, probably coming from an encoder, that will tell us where the valve is at any time. Once an object has been instantiated and deployed and is running on an engine, you can view what's inside the object. And the object viewer is the tool to use to see what's going on in there. Now when you do this, you actually would browse to the object, right click on it, and select the object viewer. It'll say view an object viewer. This comes up. If you look in the upper left hand corner, you'll see that's an explorer. And it shows you where the object that you have selected is running which area, and which engine, and which platform. Now the pane on the right, those are all of the attributes that are inside that object. But I want you, this is a snapshot. So what's in that right hand side there is a snapshot of what those attribute values are at the time you opened it. If you want to see what's going on in real time, you just drag it from that pane into the watch window at the bottom. And the watch window at the bottom those are actually updating in real time and you can see what the values are as they change. So this becomes a very important tool for diagnosing troubleshooting problems in the galaxy. And one other thing I want to mention is if you look in the upper left hand corner in that pane up there, the Explorer pane, if there's a problem, a communications problem, an internal engine problem, some sort of issue that the galaxy is having with this object, it'll show up up there. You'll see a, an exclamation or an error warning and then you can actually determine the health status of the object by looking in that pane at runtime. So now the next type of template were the device integration templates. This allow These type templates allow you to connect to PLCs, RTUs, other intelligent controllers and systems. You have the OPC which is Object for Process, Co Process Control DDE, although no longer supported by Microsoft, there are still some dynamic data exchange protocols, devices out there. And then SweetLink, and SweetLink is the native communication protocol for Wonderware. Now the system templates, platforms, objects are generated from the Win platform template, engines from the app engine template, areas from the area template, 
View Engines are from the View Engine template, and InTouch applications are from the InTouch View App template. Objects and instances then, what you'll see is that objects are the same as the parent template that they're created from. Objects must be assigned to an area to be deployed and run. Object instances are deployed and exist only at runtime. Objects being edited are checked out. An object that have been checked out can't be checked out by or edited by anyone else. And they must be checked in before they can be edited. So object internal attributes can be observed with the object viewer. Let's just take a, a few minutes to review and recap where we were. So I want to show you if you go and look in the Orchestra IDE, you see this this is our application template toolbox, our device integration template toolbox, and our and our system template toolbox. So if we go back real quickly, we just look and see these are our templates. They have the dollar sign. And you can see where we this is exactly what we just talked about. And the, the most common one you're going to use is the user defined. It's a blank template you can derive your own templates from to meet your specific needs. Then we have the device integration, which is where your DD suite link is, your InTouch proxy, OPC client, redundant DI object, and then system, app engine area. And we're just reviewing. Now, this tutorial one, this was this this is actually the Galaxy that I use for Orchestra Basics course. And this is a derived template. And you'll be able to see it. See, it has a dollar sign there, so you know it's a template, and it's derived from here. And I'll show you in a minute in the derivation view where you can tell that. So again, these are the three. This is where you see the template toolbox. Now as we go down into the Galaxy view, we have three views, model, deployment, and derivation. And I talk about these in detail in the course, introductory course. If you haven't visited, that's orchestrabasics.com. Go to deployment. And then, so what we're going to do is look at the derivation view. And then derivation view, we can see, and I'm going to go ahead and expand these. Templates that we have not used are in the unused base templates folder. And that's where you'll find them. So as you create instances of these templates, they will begin to appear up here under, under the Galaxy name. So we have I created for this course the App Engine instance, a tutorial in Touch View app, and then some custom objects under custom user defined templates. But if you look here, this was the tutorial one derived template. It's derived from InTouch View App template. So the master template is InTouch View App. I derived a template called tutorial one. Then I created an instance of a View App object under that. So this does not have a dollar sign. It is an instance, an object instance. So here you have an object instance of the app engine template, which is app engine underscore 001. That is an object instance. You have an area 001, which is going to be hosted by app engine 001. So I'll show you in a second. Now, down here under Win Platform, remember I told you the first platform that's created is a GR platform. And it has a special tinted color. It's a gold tinted color. It's always going to be the GR. The very first one is always going to be the GR. Any subsequent platform objects would be a silver color. Now this one is it has an error on it. And if you want to see the error, you go to you right click, go to properties, errors and warnings, and you'll see it says node name cannot be empty. So it's because I haven't assigned it to anything yet. So until I assign it it would have an error showing on it. So under the deployment view, this is where we can see how things are actually laid out. So my app engine is hosted by my platform, in this case the GR platform. Then my area object is hosted by the app engine. And the user defined objects that I created are hosted under the area. And then the view app object is hosted under the view engine. And that's how it's all laid out. If you want to learn more, you can head on over to orchestrabasics.teachable.com or just orchestrabasics.com. And I have a featured course, Introduction to Orchestra Programming, where I actually go into some detail about building a galaxy 
and creating some user-defined objects to communicate with .NET system environment variables, both with native scripts and custom scripts. So I hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial. And if you'd like more information, head on over there and enroll and sign up for the course. Thanks. And if you like this, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up or any comments that you may have regarding this course. Thank you.